Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Coombs. I'm a physical therapist. And in today's video, we're going to talk about neuralgia paresthetica. This is actually a condition that I have personal experience with. And later in the video, I'm going to go over the exact exercises that I used to become symptom free in about three weeks. My hope is that it will be just as helpful for you as it was for me. What is neuralgia paresthetica? It's a condition where there is compression and irritation to the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. This nerve originates in the spinal cord and exits the low back at nerve roots L2 and L3. It only supplies sensation to the front and outer thigh. It tends to become compressed under the inguinal ligament, which is a ligament located at the upper front part of your pelvis and hip region. Common causes include tight clothing and heavy belts, think construction workers and policemen, obesity, direct trauma like from a seatbelt injury in a car accident, any condition where there is intra-abdominal pressure or fluid retention such as pregnancy, and on rare occasions, a tumor or cyst may press on the nerve, but again, that's really quite rare and it's usually associated with one of the conditions I listed above previously. Symptoms are typically unilateral, meaning just on one side. There's also usually numbness, tingling, burning, sensitivity, or itching in the front and outer thigh area. And symptoms may vary person to person, but generally things that aggravate symptoms will be standing or positions of hip extension, and things that make it feel better are sitting or positions of hip flexion. Now, like many areas in the body, there are a lot of overlapping symptoms, so it is important to get an assessment by a healthcare professional who understands neuromuscular and musculoskeletal conditions. It's important to go over some lower body red flags. A red flag is any symptom that could indicate a serious underlying condition that warrants immediate medical attention. This could be recent trauma, so if you had a car accident or a recent fall, we would want to rule out any fractures or serious injuries, any loss of bowel and bladder function, saddle numbness, so numbness in the area where you would sit on a saddle, severe low back pain, progressive weakness or numbness of your lower extremities, skin changes such as discoloration or tightness that makes it hard to move, vascular changes such as swelling or a loss of pulse, these are symptoms that can potentially indicate a serious condition such as cauda equina syndrome or compartment syndrome, etc. Remember, red flags are medical emergencies. You want to seek help immediately. Now let's get into some treatment options for neuralgia paresthetica. The first treatment option is going to be a soft tissue mobilization or what we typically think of as massage of the quadriceps muscle. Take a look at the quadriceps muscle picture. It's located at the front part of your thigh and a little bit to the inner thigh, a little bit to the outer thigh, but not all the way to the side. You can use your hands to perform the soft tissue mobilization, but if you're performing it on your bare thigh, it is helpful to have some cream or lotion just so everything slides a little more easily. Some people will use a handheld roller or even a foam roll. Now, if you're using a foam roll, you do want to be careful because if the nerve is already irritated and then you're putting your whole body weight on the foam roll, it's possible that you would further irritate it. But if you're finding that using your hand or a handheld roller is just not quite enough, a foam roll is another option you can have. It's thought that this promotes relaxation of the quadriceps muscle, potentially taking pressure off of the nerve and reducing sensitivity. I would do this for about 30 to 60 seconds and just start with once a day. Make sure that your body is responding okay to that one set before adding on another set or two. Our next treatment option is a hip flexor stretch. We can do this in many positions, lying over the edge of the bed, half kneeling, sitting over the edge of a chair, or standing. It's important to try not to arch your low back while you're doing this stretch. It's thought that this stretch will reduce tightness and tension in the hip flexor muscles, and since 
sitting or being in hip flexion tends to be a position that eases symptoms. Some people will actually experience tightness over time in the hip flexors because they're always keeping their hip flexed. It's also important to initiate hip extension tolerance because being in hip extension is usually the position that aggravates symptoms. People tend to avoid it for a long time, but it is important to start working into hip extension to be able to tolerate it as we do need it for daily activities. Try to hold the stretch for at least 30 seconds and perform it two to three times a day. The third treatment option is a femoral nerve mobilization technique. It's a nerve flossing technique, and if you've looked at any of my other videos on nerve mobilizations, you'll know that we are flossing the nerve in the path that it travels. So we may be pulling it from one end and slacking the other end, and then pulling it from that end and slacking the other end. This helps to give the nerve some space, blood flow, and movement, and keeps it from getting as irritated. Now for this exercise, we can do it in side lying or in standing, the sideline option is good for anybody with issues with balance, vertigo, or is for some reason a fall risk. You'll notice that in both the sideline and standing options, my head and my knee are going to come close together, and then they're going to go far apart. When my head and knee are close together, the nerve is stretched where my neck is, but it is put on slack at the level of my hip. When my head and my knee are far apart, I am giving it slack at the level of my neck, but putting some tension or pull at the level of my hip. I'm going to alternate between these two positions 10 to 20 times, one to three times a day. The last treatment option are bridges. We know that glute strength is very important for hip and pelvis stability. The movement of the bridge also helps to slide this nerve back and forth in the hip region. You want to make sure that you're not arching your back during this movement and give it a try for eight to 10 times, one to three sets a day. Now, of course, doing the exercises daily is ideal for best outcomes, but at least three times a week would be necessary for results. In addition, it's also good to consider modification of clothing or placement of any packs or weight near your pelvis and hip region. We want to make sure that as you're rehabbing this issue, that we're letting the symptoms calm down and we're not re-aggravating it constantly. Once symptoms are improved or resolved, it would be important to progress to a lower body maintenance program. This would include soft tissue, joint, and nerve mobility, as well as strength and stability training. The recommended frequency is usually two to three times a week. So in this video, we discussed different ways to reduce symptoms of neuralgia paresthetica. Keep in mind that everyone's body responds differently to exercise, and some treatments may work better for some people than others. All right, if you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe. See you next time.